Hello and welcome to Parenting Today. My name is Rebecca Mirori Mulure. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, today's topic uh, really excites me. Money. We're talking about money. And I'm sure uh, it's a topic that you want to stick around for because you're talking about financial literacy for children, for your children, and how to best prepare for your children's future financially. And on set today is Sam Kibara and Wahoo Kibara, parents to two girls, and they're going to share their experiences on how they've been uh, just teaching their children about finances. Uh, and later on on the show, we are going to have uh, Washeke from Centronomy, who's going to tell us what uh, what is required for a parent to be able to start teaching their children about finances. Welcome to the show today. Thank you. So good to have you here. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's start with that. Uh, tell me about yourself first, then we'll, we'll get to that. I just know you're a parent to, uh, your parents to two girls. Yes. Um, so my name is Wahu Kibara, like you said. Uh, we are, Sam and I are parents to two girls, uh, the 15-year-old and a 12-year-old. Um, and it's been a good parenting journey, I must say. Um, and even in regards to finances, teaching about money, um, it has been well. Um, and we started from quite when they are young um, and going onwards. Now that they are teenagers, uh, it's become bigger lessons to teach okay. than when they were young. Yes. Or, or than they were, when, when yes, they were young. Yes, yes. So how early was early when they were young? You said they were, when you, when the, you started when they were it's, young. It's right from when you started giving money for Jesus. Yeah. Ah. The, the usual when you're going to church, you know, I give you money for Jesus. You know where to put the money for Jesus. As you move onwards, maybe somebody is being sent to the local kiosk to buy the newspaper, a packet of milk, um, and the journey has gone on, you know, getting more responsibilities about money. Okay. Yes. So how has that been for you and, uh, as, the, as the man now? I think uh, for, for women it's always, uh, at least you're going to the shop, you're doing that, but as a man now, how has it been like? Uh, thank you, thank you. So my name is Sam Tibara, and yeah, we, between us we, we are uh, happy to bring up two girls who are preteen and a teenager. Uh, pretty much like Wahoo has said, it's been a great journey. Um, not an easy journey, um, uh, simply because in the context of um, you know the society, financial literacy is not one of the things that uh, is high up there. So it means that even the training is, is just coming of age, you know, even for adults. Uh, so that means that a lot of intentionality is required even as we walk that journey. And as Wahoo says, right from when uh, you, your kids start accompanying you to the supermarket, they see numbers, when they start learning numbers in school, when they see price uh, risks, when they can uh, interact with um, you know, a receipt, and stuff like that is, is where the money and literacy journey uh, starts coming from uh, so that uh, they start understanding that money from an ATM is not money <laughs> from our, our wall. Um, money in the uh, you know debit or credit card is not uh, money in a plastic. You know they understand the whole working of money. So that has been a journey, um, and we have just tried to be intentional integrating simple lessons yes. along the life journey mm -hmm. uh, rather than having a, a lesson yes. it's yeah. actually integrating in the life journey and i like it that you've mentioned like you know from the pricing in the supermarket mm -hmm. to the uh, to the receipts so mm -hmm. do you like deliberately show them like oh this is going for this much and this is going for the, how do you how, how is that like yes that's that's a good point because um especially in this day and age when we are using mpesa we're using we're not really using cash money a lot so it's very possible that the children are not seeing the money so you go to um, a restaurant and you have a dinner but the kids actually just see a card or you fab on your phone they have no interaction they so, walk out and they walk out <laughs> So the only uh, place they get to interact is when you get the receipt, it actually indicates the money, the amount. So it is possible to do simple comparisons. It's easy for, uh, you know, to say, look at this and look at this. This is how much. And you start using very age appropriate, you know, like this is a thousand shillings. This is a hundred shillings. Ten of these go into this. So very simple lessons like what they are doing in, in their elementary school and begins to form up 
in their understanding of numbers and money and the psychology of this, money. The psychology of money. Yes. And uh, you know, when kids are, are growing up mm-hmm. and at that, at that young age, when they still don't understand about money, mm-hmm. most of the times they tend to think like, you know, you can afford everything and everything and anything. So when you walk into a supermarket, they're likely to throw tantrums and just say, you know, I want this because I know. Did you ever experience such moments and um, how did you explain to them like we cannot buy this because we don't have money, you know, or we don't, I, can, I don't want to buy this at this point? I think for us the, the best part was before we leave home we had a shopping list. Uh-huh. So that allowed us to know that when we go to the supermarket, this is what we were going to buy and of course you involve the kids in picking the items. Um, so they pick what we have and somebody chances are somebody will see something they wanted but it was not in the budget so then you get an opportunity to train that it wasn't in our plan today but maybe we can plan for it next time and now when they are older we have started teaching that you can start saving up for something um, so that the next time when we go to the supermarket then you can buy it and I remember the dad teaching that um, if now that they're in this age when you want to buy something if I paid for you there are going to be consequences for you because then we will deduct from your ah, from your savings. savings and I'm not going to deduct just the exact amount I'm going to double that amount because there are lessons that we want to start teaching that you don't just impulse buy impulse um, you know is expensive it's the same thing of like using a credit card you're going to have to pay you know with interest later so that is just trying to cultivate the culture of you don't just impulse buy. You don't do just, you know, get into a shop and wish for something and you buy it. Mm-hmm. So for us, yeah, those lessons have come um, along the way. And may- maybe even the observing the price, the price list. Yeah, when they start knowing the numbers, yeah, then you're able to tell them, you compare the products among these who is cheaper. Do they do the same job? That kind of thing. So along the way, you're able to teach um, how to compare prices. Okay. Yeah. And she's, she's talked about savings. Where are these savings coming from? <laughs> like, they, they don't have their money. I remember growing up, it was a crime to mm. be found with money. Yeah. Like, how, where did you get this five book from? Yeah. Who gave you? And you had to you know, like do the whole tracing. The parent had to trace where the money came from. Yeah. Actually, speaking into uh, the space you've talked about, tantrum. Uh, the whole tantrum in a supermarket is more of a self-control issue as opposed to a money issue. Okay. Uh, just like a de- debt, getting into debt is a self-control issue more than it's a money issue. It's actually, if you learn how to be self-controlled, uh, you perhaps be able to say no when you actually uh, you know, encounter uh, some gratification. I need to have this, I need this big TV, but I can wait and get it at the appropriate time. I can save up and all that. But coming to your question of um, saving, perhaps the uh, the best uh, financial, especially for for children, has been um, this gadget which we call the you know this gadget. Uh, uh, but I will talk about a little about uh, this gadget. But the gadgets we have is just some container with a hole and just put your coins and everything around there. Um, and that perhaps just it trains just one lesson. But there are many lessons that we need to, perhaps you're training your kids to be holders, you know, once they get the hold. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> but it is important to start at the earlier stage to allow your kids to understand the relationship between work and money. And they understand the value of money. Where does money come from? So that they are not casual about the stuff and what they can afford and what they cannot afford. So once they relate that, then now the issue, the question you ask about, you must tell them, once you do this, then we'll give you this amount. When you do this harder task, you earn actually a little more. So they start understanding that the harder uh, I do this, the more I can. And then it is recommended that we use, a, you know, transparent. Ah, piggy banks. Yes, like a piggy bank. Transparent. Yeah, like tra- a transparent. Containers that yes. from glucose and yeah, exactly. the kinds so, that were, were not transparent. Yeah, so this one begins to show them as their savings are growing. And then um, the interesting thing with this particular one is uh, that uh, it is in three parts. So once they earn 100 bob, they have a chance to decide how much goes into saving, how much goes into giving, and how much 
will they spend? It's partitioned. It's partitioned. So in that way, they begin to have this in their, uh, whatever that, I can only spend what, perhaps divide your hundred into three. I can only uh, uh, use what is there. If this is over, I can't touch the other two to just spend. Whoa. And you begin to. To grow it into the hands. Yeah. Get to encourage and carry the so we're going to talk more about that. I think it's really yeah. interesting to know how to partition that mm -hmm. and to just inculcate that in them. We're taking a short break, we'll be back. Welcome back, you're watching Parenting Today. Today we're talking about financial uh, literacy for your children. And on set is Wahu Kibara and Sam Kibara who are telling us about their own experience in raising their two children, uh, a 15-year-old and a 9? A 12, sorry, a 12-year-old. So we are, we are on the, uh, the piggy bag, as we used to call them. What is this called? <laughs> that's it. It's, 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 it's just a fancy yeah. bank. That's why we were saying you can get creative. Uh, yeah. Get creative yeah. with it. Yeah. So how important is it for them to see how much they're putting it in? Uh, they're putting in there because we, we get the we don't get transparent ones. No. <laughs> uh, it's it's just um uh, like we are saying um that financial literacy is not um a very different uh, thing that you you train to kids. It's integrated in the whole bringing up and parenting of our child. Now, when a child is growing up, it's very important for visual, you know, for them to see things. They perceive by seeing. So they see, you see your kid trying to mimic you, trying to pick a phone and all that. So in the same, same spirit, they, you want to, uh, they want, you want them to see money growing. You want them to see that your savings, table, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, you know, your, your savings, your spending and all that. So they know when I need to go throw on spending, when I need to go uh, and, and, and they can understand that what you're saving for, you can even make it a project that we are saving for your skates, we are saving for your bike and things like that. So they can actually see that and at some point then you can move that to spending so that they begin to understand that there's, there's a way system, financial system, you know, that uh, money works, that you don't get to spend what you don't have, you have to save up for you to spend, and also understand that there's a place for giving, you know, whether it is uh, from a spiritual standpoint or even from a social standpoint, there's a place to uh, give, but you're still giving from what you have. So you must, uh, that 100 bob, that uh, 50 shillings, you need to divide it into how much do I give and how much do I give. Okay. Yeah. As you grow towards going Ah, there's also that. Mm. So it's not money coming from the wall. Yes. <laughs> like the ATM money. You spoke about having a shopping list before going to shop. How have some of these habits helped your child, uh, your children right now? Because, uh, you know, at 15 and 12, mm. I'm sure these are habits that, that you've, you've, um, you've practiced, you know, for all those years. What are the results that you're seeing right now that they are preteens? One is a preteen and the other is a teen. Um. The most important lesson they have learned is that you can't just spend what you don't have um, or what you didn't plan for. So those lessons have sunk home because if we go to the supermarket and that was not in our list, but knowing at the back of the mind you can buy it next time, but it allows you to plan better. We didn't say just no, but we said we can plan for it. Um, and that also um, helps in just getting to know, am I, th that waiting period, helps them know, am I really, do I really want that thing? You know, it could have been a pair of fancy sunglasses. And within no time, probably they were just interested for that time. But that waiting period helps them know, you know, after all, I don't think I needed those sunglasses. So, um, so those are lessons that even as adults, you can, you know, apply in life. Sometimes we really want something, but you know, when you think about it, you're like, I, I really don't think I needed that. So um, I think that's one of the good lessons we are 
teaching, you know, delayed gratification. Yeah, delayed gratification. Just waiting, because there's so much waiting in life anyway. Yeah. yeah. Wow, well, I like that. Yeah. And I like that she's introduced the adults in this conversation now. Mm. <laughs> you know, I was watching this clip where parents were being asked what they're doing about their, their mm. children's future. Mm. And um, uh, as they, most of them say they're not even saving up towards their future. How much do you save every month? And one parent is like, no. Mm. There's a set of parents that were not saving at all towards their, their children's future. Mm. Tell me about that. How important is it to, to save for your children's future? And do you do it? Are you doing it for your girls? Mm. And in what way? Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for that question. But I wanted to add something small on, on the previous one that was asking about what results have you seen? And one of the things that I have just noticed now that they are, they are any time you say we need to buy something, they are always very quick to do a list. They always shop from a list. They will say, I'm going back to school, these are the things I need. They will quickly do it very easily. Even the one who is um, uh, ordinarily, they will, once they need something, they will put it on the list. So that, that has helped. Um, asking the question about, um, uh, previously I mentioned about uh, financial literacy, which is a more of an economic issue and a cross society issue. And um, the issue of are we saving up for the children? Um, yes, I mean, it's, it's like any other, and uh, from what you learn from just proper personal finance management, it's good to have your life panned out. What do I want? What are my short term? What are my medium term? What are my uh, long term? So when your child is born, perhaps that looks like it's a long term. So in uh, 18 in 18 years, they'll be going to college. In in 14 years, they might be going to senior secondary and on and so. And what kind of a school will I want? I I need to have that saved up. So luckily, there are many um, you know there are many programs that uh, are available with financial institutions, insurance companies, and even banks that have now come up to help in that where they already are structured in a way that you start saving up now and you'll be able to um, access that and uh, we have actually uh, done a few of those just to be able to help us because uh, you know you need the discipline and sometimes that discipline has to come with a structure so you have that um, uh, structured um, but as Wahoo has kept saying um, you know become creative be creative in how you because this is an expense that will come at some point. If you don't plan for it, it will disorganize your finances and you'll find yourself in a hard up situation. A lot of people live on hope, which is good, but uh, unfortunately when now the, real, the needs become real, hope no longer works. You need to have done something to that hope so that at least then when uh, time comes, then you have something you can touch in again. And you can, and you can work on. But I, I, I brought that up because I think there's that assumption, like yeah. you say, you know, a lot of people just assume, and they live on hope, like you say, uh, that by the time this child is 15, for example, yeah. I'll be able to afford to take them to high school. Then the time comes, and nowadays we don't do harambees like we used to do back in, back in our days, you know. Uh, they have a lot of harambees and, you know, you raise money enough. I don't think there's that anymore. So um, I just want to emphasize on that, mm -hmm. like how important is it for, for parents to put aside money mm -hmm. and how early can they start putting aside money for, for their children's uh, future? Uh, you know, it's an interesting question because like I said, it's an economic issue. Uh, you know, in the sense that if you don't plan yourself, you know, like they say, you, you plan to fail. And um, uh, if you don't put everything in perspective, then it means at some point you'll, you'll find yourself in, a, in an awkward situation. Now, talking about uh, children and financial literacy, it's important even to involve them when you can. In terms of how, what are you planning? What is the financial plan? This is how we are going to pay your school fees. Get them involved in the payment so that they can actually see. You mean you pay so much for my school fees? You know, they start getting into that literacy. How is money spent? How is money earned? How is money? Uh, you know, how how is it uh, on the other side spent, given, and invested? Now, when um, uh, it comes to parents, you know, it is your financial life or your economic life is going to dictate to your other lives including your health <laughs> including your social how you, whoever you interact is is very correlated with what what is your economic status so it is so important that um, 
the economic financial side of things seems to be quite an overrider to the rest. If you don't get organized on that, then it means that the other sides then become very, you become stressed, you're likely to get sick, you, you people don't want to interact with you because you're always borrowing, you know, it in impact. Yes. So my emphasis is that planning and getting into this as early as you can. Because again, time value for money. The earlier you start, the better. The better. Yes. Yeah. Work culture. Mm -hmm. I see it with the, with the Indian community. Yes. They carry their children to work from a very young age. Mm. They watch how money is made, mm. and and maybe how their parents are negotiating with the with mm. the clients. And you see it carried through the generations. Like you know, it came from this. The business came from the grandfather, mm -hmm. and, and it's carried through the generations. Yeah. Tell me about that. Is it something that we need to adopt as, as an African society? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with um, that community um, because the earlier we start integrating them into what probably we do, um, the earlier the better. And learning how it is money made. Um, for instance, you could be having um, maybe a standard eight, um, you know, candidates who have just finished their exam. They are waiting to go to high school. You have a friend who runs a shop. You know, why not ask? Uh, your, your daughter or son to go join them and be sent for errands, stock up the shelves, you know, whatever um, it is so that the work ethic can start being cultivated in them. Uh, it could be people who have um, left high school, you could join um, somebody, you have somebody who has, you know, room in their office to, to just you make use of them, not necessarily for monetary returns, but just to learn that work ethic. I think it's very important. Um, and the simple chores that people are given, like some will make them wash the car mm. and pay them because normally you, you, you pay for somebody to wash the car. Okay, normally we haven't encouraged to pay for chores because we assume the house chores are part of us. <laughs> uh, even though we employ somebody maybe to do it, but it's just they're part of us. But other things that you can pay somebody to, to do, you can still train them to do that. To do them. Yeah. Okay. We are taking a short break, but after the break, we are going to have Washeke Ndwati joining us on set. Uh, Washeke is the founder of Centronomy. Uh, she's going to explain to us more into more details what we are discussing today. Don't go away. Welcome back, you're watching Parenting Today. Today we are talking about financial literacy for your children and also how to prepare for their future financially. And now on set is Washeke Ndoati, who's the founder of Centronomy and also an author. Welcome yes, to the show. Yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Washeke, when is the best age to start teaching your children about money? I mean, I think as um, they have rightfully said, it's, it starts it's from the very beginning, even before they can count their observing certain things, yeah. And I think as soon as they can hear, and understand, even before they can, they've learned numbers or they can understand the numbers in the supermarket, you're already instilling things. And I think the first thing I tell parents to be wary about, what are you teaching them that money means? So, it, so you can do all these practical things, but where, where is it headed? Because if you look at what is the problem we're having today, people are overspending, people are, they can't control themselves. People have a scarcity mentality. So sometimes you can be thinking you're doing very good things, but you're instilling a scarcity mentality. You know how we kept being told money doesn't grow on trees, yeah? yeah? And in my book, Making Sense, I actually quote, money is a tool for the life you want, but in itself, it is not the life. So the first lesson you're teaching your kids is what is life, yeah? What is the important in life? What are the values in life? So that when money comes in, it acts as a tool. Because you can teach them to save and to save for the wrong things. Mm -hmm. You can teach them to save so much, mm -hmm. then one day their mother is in hospital and they're like, but I'm saving my money, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So if you don't teach them values first, mm -hmm. what is important in life, character first, it does not matter how much on the principal side of money that you do, because they'll use money the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And they will observe you what you're saying. If you're always talking about how you can't do it, 
or if it, there's a power, if they sense pow a power in the house that, for example, dad earns a lot of money, mom doesn't earn a lot of money, so dad is the decision maker. So money means that if I have money, I am the decision maker. It means if I don't have money, I am not the decision maker. Then at one point when they're 18, they'll decide what they want to do with that money and it will be there. So you've got to investigate and this comes from the, the parents, yeah? What are we going to teach them money means? And whether we teach them to set, suspend, save, what in our dynamic and how we relate to money are they observing? Are they observing that money is a secret conversation that mm -hmm. mom and dad go and lock themselves that's in a room? A, that's how we grew yeah, and up, we grew up actually. like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we grew up because we're always told, and it's time for a secret conversation. We grew so we understood yes. money is this secret, secret thing that later on in life, if I'm struggling with money, I must keep it. I must go to the secret room <laughs> to discuss it. I can yes, never. But while I'm out in the open, it is. I pretend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they will observe that you're telling them to save and everything, but they will observe when other people are around, you switch your conversation and want to act like everything is so, so good, but yet you are telling them, I'm sorry, how can you ask for more money, for toys? You know, we have no money. Then you're, when, other, when guests come in the house, you're like, oh, life is good, yeah. and you'll put out all the best things and spend money that day for guests. So they're like, oh, guests are we so never this We never eat this, this, but when guests come. So in so many wow. ways, and the subtle things you do, You've got to investigate what message about money mm. am I? That is the most important thing. Even mm. if you get, even for parents who are listening to this, who have never done any of the lovely things you were hearing earlier, if you can get that right, then mm. the rest can, the rest you can actually, don't worry, you can catch up. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then I just want to say, you've got to really, I think sometimes we want to instill lessons in our kids, but we don't want to look at ourselves. Mm. It will show up. If you have bad spending habits, it will show up. If you're drowning in debt, it will show up. If you're miserable, it will show up. Mm. If you're only happy when you get money, it will show up. So sort yourself out as a pack then. <laughs> Even <laughs> before, fill your cup first, yeah? yeah? Before you try and, and, uh, and, um, and fill your kid's cup. But I think teaching kids about money is a lovely journey. Um, I think you learn so much and you expose, and I think get prepared to learn from them mm. as much as you are teaching them. Yeah. Because especially in the, I also have a 12 year old, the mm. age they're talking about, mm. they are more opinionated more mm. than mm. ever. Yeah. And even as sometimes you know what they should do, sometimes when you listen to them, it also gives you a chance to accept some feedback that because remember even for us we are operating from how did we learn about money mm -hmm. so even as we have our very good intentions but sometimes your mother's voice or your father's <laughs> voice is in your ear yeah. and you find yourself making mistakes <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, exactly after high school you're like no you need to go to college first because exactly. if you start touching money before you go to college exactly, it's a quarry. exactly. so there are those things that if we're not careful and a lot of people were I think being given money was so difficult even when you've earned it by their parents that yeah. it was so tra almost traumatic <laughs> that they sometimes make it as difficult for their children without investigating. Is there really a good lesson? Because we have to be prepared that we're also the, if you're listening to this, your work is also to break generational things that may have been happening that you don't want to happen with your, with your children. Yeah. So even in the approach to money, I think it's all about let money be a tool for a good life, mm -hmm. a wholesome life, mm -hmm. and teach them that, and then the principles that help money in that, and even now, as they are starting to do some things, listen to them, because their version of a wholesome life, they'll get more clearer and clearer. You have mm -hmm. a 15-year-old, mm -hmm. and one day they're 18, and you can't, yeah, mm -hmm. you, they have their opinions about what this wholesome life is. Yes. But I really like the principles they spoke about, and it's the same principles, I understand. It's spend, it's save, is give. Mm -hmm. Now in the spending, don't remember we are not teaching them to be irresponsibility. Even though you are not being given an allowance of being paid, chores are chores. As in you don't, it shouldn't be, oh you didn't pay me so I'm not making mm -hmm. my bed. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> so remove, how do you differentiate? How, you have to remove think, what like is a, your responsibility like, as being a member of this household. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even mom is not being paid for making sure food is at table, or dad is not being paid for sorting out electricity and plan. It, it's what 
is your responsibility as a member of the household. And just think about any job you do, even you. Mm -hmm. Are you 100% paid for every single thing you do on the job? No. Mm -hmm. But as part of being in this organization, there's just a, an unspoken responsibility yes. as being part of a community. Yeah, any community that you're in. So don't enter the mistake of thinking you have to pay your kids for everything. I hear, oh, they passed in school and they got paid. Pass? You're supposed to pass. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to work it hard in expected. school. Yeah. It is expected, mm -hmm. yeah? So differentiate at this stage, and it's different for different ages. At this stage of your life, what is your responsibility in the house? Mm -hmm. And then what are those extra things that we are going to reward, reward you for and we're going to we have decided it's okay mm. to use money as a reward or you're just going to be given an allowance because we think yeah. that generally in your life you need some money so but yeah. don't negate that they have to be responsible with or without the money in yeah. question so don't use money or, or i'm sorry i didn't have your allowance this week and then i'm not doing my chores this week that, day. <laughs> that, that <laughs> should not happen like and then even as they start in the spending let me categorize it there's those things they'll spend for themselves but mm. we don't also want to cultivate such a selfish attitude yeah. that it's all about them mm. so depending on where they are mm. what else how can they also spend as part of their responsibility so part of what you got let's say you got 200 bob this week part of the spending is are you going to be the one who buys at least one packet of milk yeah. or tomato something mm -hmm. like my son now he's so used to if we're going to anywhere where there's parking he always carries like a 50 pop he's mm -hmm. like i pay parking and i'm like yeah you That's should so, so the part of their spending <laughs> should be that yeah? yeah and so it's not all about your books and your toys mm -hmm. yeah and your games me 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 me, yeah. me yeah because think about me 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 how me 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 looks like in their 20s <laughs> Yeah, mm. me me is what gets people to the kind where they can't control be me me mm. and they get into bad debt because it's all about me and they remove the responsibility side because ultimately one day they'll be paying rent mm. it's still all about me 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 you'll be overdue with your landlord yeah the spending teach them me yeah because the only way kids will learn about money is by spending they need to go to the shop and start seeing numbers yeah exactly. mm. and hold yourself back from because the first time it happened to me, my heart broke. Right with my son, he had him he, in his mind. Obviously, he has a lot of money. <laughs> He's all of three hundred bob. Yeah, <laughs> there at the, at the supermarket. He's gone straight to the toy section. Wow, wow, wow! The disappointment. <laughs> I don't know if you've been through that. Yeah, because you he then realizes. And him, he, him, he has worked so hard to mm. just realize what he wants. It's not even coming close. close. Yeah. <laughs> and he looked at me, and of course, what did I want to do? To save him. Yeah. But I was like, Sheke, hold yourself yeah. back. Mm. This is so important yes. yeah. that he learns this life mm. lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I like what he said, because after a while, he even figured maybe it was not so, so, mm. so important. So, and I want us to get us to, yeah. uh, I want yeah. to, get to now parents. Yeah. Now, like, can we talk about parents now? Yeah. How can they best prepare for their, for their children's future? financially because yeah. like you say it, it all boils back to us the culture yeah. that we've created around mm -hmm. the yeah home. yeah mm -hmm. um let them first we have a, a course for teenagers and we ask mm -hmm. teenagers go learn how much you cost mm -hmm. go learn how much you cost at home mm -hmm. and let them face i think we're so scared of showing them the big numbers mm -hmm. school fees Yes, protecting them and then they grow up and a lot of kids are growing up thinking this thing just happened by magic I just go to college yeah, yeah? mom and dad just figure out high school and school fees let them know what they cost even their share of food yeah, me have a discreet in boy and I'm like his share of food is increasing <laughs> by, the, <laughs> by the minute yeah? yeah let them come and I think what happens when they understand that they're like oh my goodness this is the sacrifice that is made for me mm. let them understand what it costs you to do that I don't go on I could be we could be in Mombasa me and your father we could be in Mombasa yeah every month but <laughs> worry not for, for what it, you <laughs> worry not and not don't 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 give them guilt yeah, about yeah, it yeah. but it's good for them to come to this is what i actually cost so the first thing i'll say preparing your because in the future we're probably talking about the bigger spending the college and onwards yeah 
don't save them from what it will take to achieve it. And the reason I say this is because stuff in life happens. Sometimes the college I wanted you to go to may not happen. One of us loses an income, one of us gets sick and life changes. If they are not aware about that, they are unprepared for changes in life. They are like, oh, this was my direction. Mom and dad magically will sort it out. Mm -hmm. But if they don't know what it actually takes you, they don't know how to understand the circumstances that may come that you are not able to do what you said. Yeah? yeah. So, but tell them now, because this is what college said, this is actually what we are doing. And you find kids are, that's why I like this journey of kids. Kids, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, adults, we have a lot to learn from kids. Kids mm -hmm. are very unselfish. Mm -hmm. They're like, what can I contribute? Oh, mom, yes, I, I know I was supposed to buy a book with this, but here is this 1,000 bob, etc. And in that small way, they start understanding, if this is what it takes, how can I contribute? How can I make mom and dad's life a bit easier? And should there be a, an eventuality where I can't get my exact plan, they are also prepared to be able to absorb it. So pre save, so, yeah. invest mm -hmm. for your kids' education, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. but don't save them from knowing what it takes, how much it is, especially at the right time, mm -hmm. especially like your 15-year-old, yeah? Of course, when they are four years old, yes, they can't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I want us to do this really quick. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Ashiki? Yeah. I think she has kind of answered because yeah. I, was, I, was, I wanted to ask her whether they have programs where we can introduce, you know, the high schoolers, the yeah. 15 year old, the 16 year old, yeah. heading out to for yeah. home and, you know. Um, and I believe, I think, St. Yeah, we do have a teenagers. Yeah. And how important is it for parents to enroll uh, their kids to such a program? It is important because, first of all, then they get to sit together uh -huh. and then they get to discuss the mistakes parents make. Uh -huh. For example, they have this monies in their piggy bank or bank account mm -hmm. and the ma the parents are like, oh, we need this. And they come and read them, which <laughs> oh, is horrible. Oh, it is so horrible yeah, to see that. Yeah. So we get teenagers telling us that is actually why I, this thing of money. Oh. If they get the sense that I will do the work and then the rewards don't come back oh. my way, mm. they will simply mm. they will simply not do it. But they also get to now talk mm -hmm. to, to to other to other teenagers about what is actually going on and wow. seeing different people have different lifestyles, wow. different mm. circumstances, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and seeing that context mm. and then understanding what are needs, what are wants. So even when they're spending, mm. what is a what is actually a need mm. and what is actually a want. Wow. And you see needs, yes, mm. and and involve them in some of their needs as they are getting more money, please mm. involve them mm. more and more in the responsibility mm. side of even taking care of themselves. Yeah, Absolutely. but wants can can actually be actually be delayed yeah but they are very when you involve kids there they tend to they, they tend to surprise you and we are also remember where are we going we're going we're entering a place where it's not all about getting a job that will pay you yeah. a salary. that is the future of this country this continent yeah so even in this journey of teaching kids it doesn't stop at saving we want them to be wealth creators that is what we are we are we want this generation to become wealth creators. Mm -hmm. So even from the age that you're talking about, especially the teenagers, they can start saying, how do I mm -hmm. earn money? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, this is what I get from my usual responsibilities. This is what mom and dad give me, but it can't stop there. Can I make samosas? Can I bake? Can I do things like that? Mm -hmm. So empowering kids with some entrepreneurial abilities is very, is very key. It's very key. It's very key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any some? Uh, no, I'm uh, just uh, uh, appreciating. Are, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because our yeah. focus, I think, has really been on the older ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just trying to teach her young yeah. the, the principles she has said, which are so key. Yeah. And I see the point. And that's definitely something we want to consider. Exactly. Yeah. And taking kids with you along. Yes. Like, are you going to yes. the bank? Just take them. Mm. Yeah. I had me, my son, when they, having events, work up, started taking him. Uh -huh. Like, sit here and yeah. sell the books. Yes. Book fairs, we are there. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they have, they have to see you, what it takes for, for real you. life, mm. or for you, mm. and yeah. to observe you. Because they, yeah. they just learn so much. You're the first that you we are our first kids' role models. Yes. Mm. They're going to learn so much from, mm. from you. So don't hold back going with them. And even if you're discussing problems with money, 
Let them be there. Be there. Yeah. Let them be there. Investment yeah. options for parents for their kids' future. Like I, I've, I've heard of parents saying they're going to plant trees and then in ten years they're yeah. going to harvest <laughs> the trees and sell and pay for the kids' uh, yeah. school fees, college fees. The good thing is most parents will be doing it from a place of where they have time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're looking long term. So you're looking really looking at things that will give you value in the long term. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak to trees. I really yeah. don't know about the the tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? But if that's if they have done the research and they feel that is it, mm -hmm. we'll go. But typical investments, you'd look at some things like shares on the stock market that will appreciate in value. Yeah. So it's a bit, it looks a bit risky, mm -hmm. but it's risky if you're doing it for a short term because shares can drop in the mm -hmm. short term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're working with a short period of time, then you you can't do mm -hmm. those risky investments. What I tell parents is you have to make time to learn. Yeah, we have a program on called Centronomy 101, which is really about now the parents come to class and learn for yourself. For yourself because first. each investment has a, a different rationale. Okay. Rationale I think we, yeah. we, we need a whole show again for, <laughs> for this, but thank you so much for your contribution. Yeah. We've, we've, uh, we've been speaking to Sam Kibara and Wahu Kibara, and also Washek and Dwati from Centronomy, uh, just educating us about financial literacy for your child. And I'm sure you've got a thing or two. My name is Rebecca Miruri Murlure. Thank you so much for watching. Parenting today. Welcome to Thailand Carpet, where we deal with everything you would need at home, in the office, restaurant and hotels. We offer solutions to all your needs. We have a wide range of roofing solutions, tiles, sanitary furnishing and interiors. We have exquisite furniture, elaborate dining sets and classic comfy beds. Our prices are affordable across board. Feel free to visit us in any of our different branches in Mombasa, Kisumu and Nairobi. We also do site visits and offer clients with professional advice. You can reach us on this number for the site visit.